Hey Button Pushers, my name is Nick and welcome to the final episode of Booth. I don't know how long this episode's going to be. You'll know because it will show you the runtime of the episode. I don't know. I'm just going to have to live with that. Quick recap. We are on chapter number five, week number seven, and the last few episodes have been hell. We were dragged to the Iden government headquarters for an employee survey. Uh, we were there for three, four days answering questions which culminated in asking what we would do about smugglers, of which I've been helping, but I made the decision to make them trust me so I kept quiet on everything. Went back up to my skybox, carried on with work for a few days and then just as I was about to start work, the doorbell goes and it's the government officials coming to pick me up to take me to court and they've not said why. They've said in all likelihood it's probably just they need my testimony for something but they don't know. So I'm thinking it's either going to be something to do with the smugglers something to do with Kutcher, who they captured, or something to do with me. So they know that I've smuggled some black bottles, which is a problem. I mean, all, the, all of those things are a problem because I'm directly linked to all of them. It could be something completely unrelated, but I don't know. But either way, I'm back in the Island Government building, I'm working there, and then after work, I get taken to court to have God knows what done. So there's a good chance I'm going to die. But this is the final chapter, so we are going to play this now until it's done. And hopefully we get a good ending out of this. I really hope we get a good ending out of this, because I'm fully invested in the story. Alright. Oh god, Demian's going to be so pissed off with me. Nobody's here. Oh god. What happened to Demian? Did he make it out? Oh. I should probably just worry about myself now. How am I going to do all this work by myself? Yep, this is going to be a problem. Attention, extra line 049. Transportation mode non-stop. Incoming item number one, crab. Correct weight and colour, please refer to blackboard. Jam check, necessary for item number one. Incoming item number two, bottle. Correct weight and colour, please refer to the blackboard. Bottling, necessary for item number two. Sterilization necessary for all. Oh no. So <laughs> I have to do everything. Oh, from stamping. I can go straight in there. Uh, nope. Nope. Right, let's do a quick germ check. Oh, I don't even know what the germ is, but I'm doing. We. Uh, it's like a weird W. Okay. Six. Okay, you're fine. I'm going to end up with a lot of crabs to germ check. This is, this is bad. This is so bad. Right, quick jump check. Okay, you're not good. That's one down at least. Oh, <laughs> they're coming through so quickly. Okay, no bueno. I am gonna get fined a lot of money for this. But I don't care. I would rather do that than make a mistake. I've filled that roll. Oops. Well, this is a problem. I've just got to hope all of these are no good. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get fined. No good. No! Oh, I just threw one away without germ checking it. That's gonna be a mistake. Hopefully I'll get lucky. No good. Chuck you in there. This is so dickish that I've got to do all of this by myself. One more load and we're done. Oop. Unqualified item found. Jesus. Two mistakes. It's been a while since I've had a day with two mistakes. I just like, I hope there's not two more mistakes. Because if there is, I'm in big trouble. Okay. Done. That was bad. In my defence, I'm very distracted. Oh, I see. You know what? That's not bad. Oh, God. I can't find so much money. Okay. Hello, Mr. Crawfords. I hope you're not overwhelmed by the work. Normally we'll have more people here, but you know, special days. What special days? It's the trial season. Haven't you noticed? There's always a time of year that we hold trials extensively. 
I thought they were held only when they're necessary. They are necessary. Unless you think you know better than the Great Ones. Sorry. Well, you'll find out yourself later if these trials are necessary anyway. Follow me. Ooh. Also, there is a live tournament for the people that pass the newcomer auditions. That is going to happen at the end of this week. I don't know whether I'm still going to be a part of that, but that's something different. I could be dead by then. The elevator kept going up slowly and squeakily. After an unusually long ascension, the doors opened to an area that only felt like an emergency exit. Turning several corners with Turner, I can finally see the court through a solemn looking gate. <sighs> the court is just like how it looks on TV's live trials. Spacious, quiet, blinding big white lights. Three statues sitting high in the middle of the stage. All the audience is already seated and dressed in the same cloak. Mm. Oh, God. Okay, Mr. Crawford. The trial should start any minute, as soon as they set up the connections. Now, please, sit here and wait. Mm. Not happy about this. Soundtrack. One, two... Okay, we're good to go. Play the music. Good evening, citizens beloved. Sorry for the waiting. We're honoured to be representing all the other great ones who can't join us today. And like always, we will be hosting the upcoming trial remotely. Quiet, please. That's right. Some of you may not know. We're not gonna be the judges here. That's what dictators do, not us. Instead, we'll let the people be the judges. Oh, God. Every civilian randomly invited and gathered here today will be deciding the fate of our defendants, together. And rest assured, your identities are well protected. Speaking of which, I've seen you all put on your anonymous cloaks. Good. With that done, be absolutely free to express your opinions today. And remember, every one of them matters. What is happening? Okay, let's bring our first defendant to court, shall we? Oh no, here I call Katja Ivanov. Please come forward to the stage. Oh, Katja. How did you get yourself caught? Citizens beloved, the defendant in front of you is accused of stowaway, and more importantly, conspiracy with D's. That's right, that dangerous cold-blooded terrorist group who attacked our Bay Area. She was arrested during a random road check. We found she didn't have a proper ID card to prove her citizenship. Plus. In a follow-up Q&A, she seemed to be lacking in the basic knowledge of Iden. These two things indicate a high possibility of her entering the city illegally. As for her connection with Dees, we'll come to that in a minute. Now, Katja Ivanov, do you have a lawyer with you, or are you going to defend yourself? I, I don't know any lawyers. What happened to your Dees friends? Are they just going to leave you like this? Like I said before, I don't even know what D's means. Very well. It will be too late for you to confess now anyway, right? Which leaves you no choice but to be your own defender. Any objections? No. Okay now. Would you please explain to us why you don't have an ID? Let me remind you, every citizen in Aiden should have one of those. I... Sorry, I, I did trespass, but please hear me out. The place I was living, it's... Stop there. If I get it right, you have just admitted stowaway. Yes, but... Sorry, we don't have time for every criminal's background story. Let me guess. Maybe you're here because you don't have enough food to survive in your own city. You get that a lot here. And really, that's not how things work here. And every citizen here knows it. Am I right? 
For your information, it's not like we don't have people starving here. Why should we let you, a foreigner, in to steal our food? No, no, I, I won't steal. Just tell me how you want me to work. I'll do anything. That's enough. You're just making yourself embarrassed. Let's just get to the next question, the important one. Are you working with Dees? I know absolutely nothing about this. Dees thing you keep talking about. Never have I had any connection with it either. Why are you trying to blame this on me? Do you even have proof? Uh, excuse us for a minute. Oh, catch her. Quiet, please. Of course, we'll give our reasons for that. Citizens beloved, I believe all of you have seen the news on TV. Sorry that we've been keeping it from public for some time. That's just because we didn't want our people to panic before we found out what's really going on. In short, we discovered that the bombing materials in use could only be attained outside of Aiden. Therefore, considering the timing of your trespassing, we suspect it's more than a coincidence that the bombing happened just after you entered Aiden. Bombing? Why would I come all the way from Wormansk, a city in the far north, to do such a thing? I came here only hoping to live a normal life. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't even know what Dees is. How could I possibly help it do anything? Exactly. You just reminded us there. Maybe you did know nothing about Dees. However, Dees might know you. What? That's right. Maybe you just helped them without knowing it yourself. Maybe you've just been used. So why don't you tell us how you managed to get into Aiden? That should give us a hint. And oh, names are even better. Um, I... Just tell us who planned this for you, and who's with you. I suppose you didn't come here alone, did you? No. I, uh, don't know if this is his real name. A man called Joseph drove me here. Joseph? Is he the one who planned this for you? No, he's just a driver, I think. Well, does he live here in Iden? I, I don't know. Maybe? Who does he work for? If you mean the people who planned this, they're, they're in Wormansk. Oh, they are? Why would they help you in the first place? Are you a spy? For God's sake, no! I just paid them to get me out of there. Yelling is not going to do you any good. I'm sorry. Okay, I think that's as far as we can get. Do you have anything more to add? The result may change a lot based on what you shared with us. I'll take that as a no, then. As the citizens present, we'll decide together your sentence tomorrow. Alright, before we run out of time, let's bring out our second defendant. Who we believe is a member of Dee's, and hear what he's got to say. And staff... Please take Katja Ivanov down. Am I the second defendant? No. Okay. Why am I here? Here I call Owen... Whatever. Please come forward to the stage. Oh, shit. Right, please. He is not confirmed to be a D's member yet. But still, let me tell you why we think he is. Why don't you tell us what you do, Mr. Halim? I, I work at the Skyline as a food inspector. What about before? I, I worked at the landline. That's right. Surprised, huh? How can a man like him be a member of D's? How can a food inspector betray our trust like that? We wanted to prove it wrong, we really did, but the facts just said otherwise. So here's what we found. As soon as we knew the bomb materials were coming from the outside, the skyline immediately became our focus. That's because, before the bombing happened, we already noticed there were strange, unidentified items being put on our skyline. Clearly someone was trying to work with some food inspectors to smuggle them into Aiden. And these items all carried some sort of black powder with them. Yes, 
It is what you think it is. Anyway, our next move was to go through the list of Skyline Inspectors and try to find any suspicious personnel. Then the name Awan Halim caught our attention. As a former Landline Inspector, his performance was impeccable. But why would such a great worker like him suddenly ask for a workplace change to the Skyline right before we start to find those unidentified items? Could you repeat your reason of application for us again here, Mr. Halim? Sure. There, there was just nothing left to challenge me in the landline. I know, I know, it might not sound that appropriate for him to say. But we didn't think much at the time. After all, he had been the landline daily star for quite some time when he applied. However, with the attack, the timing there just seemed too good to be a coincidence. So we decided to carefully calculate if the item numbers add up at booth 220 where he works. And as it turned out, there was indeed something vanishing from his belt. Hey, excuse me, may I say something? Oh sure. I, I won't be having a lawyer so I'm, I'm just going to defend myself there. Alright, go ahead. Dear citizens, I have been doing food inspection for years. One thing I've been told from the beginning is that you can't possibly know for sure how many items will pass through your booth. We have hundreds, if not thousands of booths, and they all connect to a huge sorting machine on the front lines. After our gatherers there put food in, those items will get mixed, sorted and sent to other smaller machines to repeat the same. By the time those items arrive at the specific booth, the total number will be unavoidably random. Let alone the whole sorting process is automated and quarantined for the sake of safety and fairness, meaning nobody can rig it. So you can see it's, it's impossible to do that kind of calculation. Unless they've been lying to us about this sorting system the whole time. I've got to say, I'm impressed. Well prepared, a nice try indeed. But to be sure, everything Mr. Halim said about the sorting system is true. But still, we had successfully found a solution to that. We'd love to share it now, but sadly, our time is up today. The trial will continue tomorrow. Now, my beloved citizens, you may go to the Grand Hall on 1F and get your food. Courtesy of the Iron Government. Dismissed. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, doing his voice is really killing my throat. Alright, Mr. Crawford. Seems like it's not yet your turn today. Or maybe you're just invited here to be a judge. Well, you can really use a young aspiring inspector's point of view apart from all that citizens. Apart from that of the citizens. Uh, what should a judge do, by the way? Simple. You listen and you vote. Two or three will be asked to share their opinions, though. Haven't you watched the live trials on TV? I, um, I rarely watch them. Oh, fair enough. Now you get to try on the spot, eh? Yeah, I, I guess. Okay, then. I'll see you after work tomorrow. Oh, good. Another day in paradise. Alright, let's go to bed. Oh, this is, this is honestly horrific. I don't know how to feel right now. Sad, relieved, or scared. All I know is that invisible fist is wielding again, mercilessly. Okay, let's go do this. I guess I didn't get to go to 1F and get food. Okay, what fresh hell do you have today? Attention, extra line 049. Transportation mode, non-stop. Incoming item number one, pig head. Correct weight and colour, none. Item number one, note, for ritual purposes, all checks unnecessary except stamping. Red stamp necessary for item number one. Incoming item number two, bottle. Correct weight and colour, please refer to the blackboard. Bottling necessary for item number two. Sterilisation necessary for item number two. No germ check. Good. Okay, this is good. This is okay. Wait, no. What? Why? Oh. I do have the germ check. 
Oh, for God's sake. You were trying to trick me by not telling me, weren't you? That's way too much. Oh, for God's sake. No, go on the scale. This is annoyingly speedy. I'm gonna get fine again because I'm gonna be behind. You're fine. Okay, that should be the last of them. Now I just need to germ check all these bottles. Oh, I'll take that back. And he does more. Quick germ check is exactly how problems happen, but still. I'm pretty confident that none of them are going to have any issues on the germ check, but I don't want to risk it. Bastards, there was not a single problem with the germs there. It's fine. I would rather be diligent than unemployed. Okay. Done. That's going to be a hefty fine. Oh, okay. Well, not bad. Got an A. Take it. Oh, there. You getting used to the work? Uh, yeah, somehow. I mean, I'm not. I'm fully not. It's time for court again. Oh, what a turner. Let's go. Why am I making fun of his voice? I gave him that voice. You may sit here, Mr. Crawford. Hopefully they'll reach some sort of conclusion today. Meet you after the court. Okay, they, yeah, they said they were going to decide on catcher today. Good evening, citizens beloved. Second day into the trial, it's time for us to hear what the judges think. But first, the defendants. This one shall be done today. Here I call Katja Ivanov. Okay then, where were we yesterday? Oh right, you admitted your trespassing and gave us a name. Hmm, Joseph. We'll definitely look into that, although you could totally just make that up. So what else do you want to tell us before we hear it from some of our citizens? I don't know what else to say except to repeat the truth. I didn't make Joseph up, that's just what he told me. And I know nothing about Tees. I travelled a long way from Wormansk to Iden just to seek a new life. Never did and will I mean any harm to Iden or its people. That's all. Okay, I think we've heard quite enough of that. Now stuff, let's roll the dice. What? Ah, oh, okay. But deciding. Citizen number 230, please come forward to the stage. Thank, thank you, Your Honour, for having me. I, uh, I see things in a very simple way here. It doesn't really matter where she came from. Did she break the law? Yes. So, is she guilty? Of course. As for her connection with Dee's, well, as long as we exile her, she won't be able to do any harm to us anyway, right? We'll just have to strengthen our border control, is all I'm saying. Thank you. Next. Citizen number 158. Please come forward to the stage. Uh, hi, Your Honour and, and everyone. Uh, I think there's no need to argue if she's guilty or not, since she already admitted it. The, the question is, should we let her stay? And the way I see it, we should not. If anyone can just come to our streets and line up for food, how are we going to survive? Think about your families. Did you have enough food on your tables? Did you want to make your share of food even smaller? Do you want some foreigners to make our food supply stations even more crowded? I certainly don't. Mm. Racism. Citizen number 110, please come forward to the stage. I, I don't know, sir. She, she's guilty, that's for sure. But I mean, don't we need people in the front lines now? <laughs> Maybe we can put her there or something. Yeah, she, she may be dangerous if she's, uh, like, from D's. Oh, stupid me. 
If she's really a terrorist, who knows what she'd do with our food there. We don't want to take that risk, do we? Let's just exile her for good. That's what she deserves anyway. Oh, how many more voices am I going to have to make? <laughs> oh, my reservoir's tapped out. Your Honour and everybody. It's clear that she trespassed, so I'll just skip that. About these, though, there's only one thing she said caught my attention. Didn't she say she paid for these people to get her here? If that's true, these people must be very experienced, right? So, why didn't she have an ID, even a fake one? There must be something wrong. Maybe she's not been honest with us at all. Maybe she is indeed a member of D's. Either way, we can't have her an item. Well, not looking good for catch. <laughs> Thank you all, beloved citizens. I think you've all made very good points, especially that last one. But you should know, it's never up to me to decide what's good or bad. In a minute, we'll have one or two rounds of voting. You can use the panel on your seat to vote anonymously. Before that though, catch her Ivanov, if you want to defend yourself, now is your last chance. What's wrong? Nothing. No matter what I say, it's not going to change the result, is it? Well, if you keep saying things that don't matter, I don't see why it'll change. Our judges are not going to be lenient just because of your kind words. You broke the law. You broke the law! I have nothing to say then. Thank you for your cooperation. Staff, please take her off the stage. Okay, hopefully I get to vote. Now, every judge that is present, please choose. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I've got to back up my girl. God, is he going to say one not guilty? Oh my god, it is. Uh-oh. 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 Oh no. Okay. Kind of like a sore thumb here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, the result is guilty 249 votes against not guilty one vote. It, it could just be a misinput. We've had that before. And the results won't be affected by it anyway. Well then, since she's found guilty, the next voting is going to be about her sentence. The two possible options are decided based on Iden Law's stowaway section. Exile or death? Death by exile. Um, Leo, I want to keep her in. Keep her in. I come on. Go for labour. Go for labour. Go for labour. Go for labour. What? How's it gone down? This is like a really depressing horse race. Come on, labour. Oh no. Oh, it's gonna be death by exile. At least I wasn't alone this time. Thank you all for your cooperation. I think we have a verdict. Mm, Katja. Here I announce Katja Ivanov, guilty of stowaway, is sentenced to exile. The execution will take place in one week. The judge's decision is final. Case closed. Sorry. Execution? That's, that's, that's not what exile means. Unless it means she'll be kicked out in a week. Next, we'll continue our conversation yesterday with the other defendant. Please come forward to the stage, Awan Halim. Oh, Katja. Sweet Katja. I've got to say, not that many people can be as calm as you are standing right there, Mr. Halim. No, not necessarily. I'm just bad at showing emotions. Well, we'll see. So yesterday, you questioned the possibility of us knowing if there were items taken from your belt. Is that correct? Yes. And the reason for this is our distribution systems. It mixes things so hard that it's impossible to know how many items will arrive at my booth in the first place. All right, about that. Here's our answer. Indeed, you are right about the distribution systems. Normally, one can never tell if there are things missing from the belt because no one knows the correct sum. But, you know, we always go to great lengths when we're dealing with terrorists. So this time, what we did was asking every food inspector in Skyline, but you, 
to go for one day off. Ooh. And then everything became simple. If the sum total of items that day decreased, it must be you who took something off the belt. And to our surprise, it worked the first time we tried. To be exact, the sum total was down by one that day. You took it. Am I right? That's, uh... If, if that's true, it would mean you sacrificed the entire Skyline's manpower for a day. Exactly. Like I said, we spared no effort. But it, it still doesn't make sense. We have every officer who took part in this to prove it. There's no running away from this, Mr. Halim. Just admit your D's membership and cooperate with us. That might be the only way our judges will go a little bit easier on you. Even if I did take things off the belt, that doesn't mean I'm in with D's, does it? What are you trying to say? That you only took, no, stole food for yourself? Alright, yes, you got me. I'll admit, I did take some food for the belt for myself. But, but again, you can't say I'm a member of D's just by that. You've got a good point. I mean, he is fully a member of D's, but... Mr. Halim, if you're trying to convince us here, you'd better explain everything right. The timing of your application for the Skyline, your misbehaviour as a top food inspector, and what exactly you took from the belt. Okay then. At this point, I think sharing the truth is the only way I can help myself in this trial, isn't it? Of course. Okay then. The truth. I asked for a transfer only because I'm sick of being underground, and the food there is nothing special. What do you mean, nothing special? I mean nothing worth taking. I've always known how easy and safe to take food off the belt, but why would I want to steal canned food while I could eat much better meals every day? So that's why I wanted to go up there, where there's rare food. Not because I'm working with D's or something. The timing there was just a coincidence. And the fact that I took food off the belt doesn't really conflict with me being a good food inspector. Why? Because I'm not the only one that's doing it. Ooh. I've heard it and seen it with my eyes. Many inspectors, good or bad, are also doing it. Not just inspectors, the government. That's enough, Mr. Halim. Please don't go astray from the case here and don't try to spread unproven rumours. Just tell us what you took from the belt so we can move on. I was just trying to tell the whole truth to the judges. Stop calling it truth, Mr. Halim. Last warning. What food did you take? An apple. Well, just as what we found. Sure you did. I said I'd be telling the truth. Alright. All I know is that your crimes can be confirmed now. Crime. Not crimes. Yeah, we'll see about that. Whatever I did, I did for myself, not these. You'll have your chance to defend for the last time tomorrow. What? Staff, take him down. I say he might get himself out of this sticky situation. Beloved citizens, we resent people that abuse their power like Mr. Halim does. We'd never allow that kind of thing to happen under our supervision. Because we know how crucial a fair distribution is to the health of our society. What Mr. Halim did is the opposite of that, and he even tried to spread rumours to make himself look less evil. I believe you're all smart enough to see through that though. But still, what he did back there can already be considered an overt thought crime to some extent, which is not much better than what Dees did. Please take that into consideration when making your decisions tomorrow. Alright, I think that's all for today. Apologise for such a long trial. Like yesterday, you may now go to the Grand Hall and get your free food. Eat well, and have a good night. Dismissed. Oh, this is so stressful. And I'm not even being, in, I'm not even being questioned. I'm very pleased I'm not being questioned. Sorry you had to listen to Mr. Halim's speech back there. Many defendants just break down and start talking gibberish like that. Don't let that get to you. Alright, 
Have a good morning. Okay, let's eat and sleep. It broke my heart to see Catra end like that. I wish I had the courage of Owen. I know what he said is true. But what am I going to do even if I did? Nothing has ever changed since that day. Card was slipped under the door. Lawyer? Quinn? Hmm. Interesting. Who is suggesting that I'm going to need a lawyer? That concerns me deeply. <laughs> Another day in the hellscape. Attention, extra line 049. Transportation mode non stop. Incoming item number one, lava. Correct weight and colour, please refer to the blackboard. Incoming item number two, sprouts. Correct weight and colour, please refer to the blackboard. Sterilisation necessary for all. Jam check necessary for all. Oh, this is not going to end well at all, is it? Uh, lava. Yeah, you're lava. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, nope. Panicked. <laughs> what well, another coffin? So, two coffins. Three. Oh, good lord. Why? Oh, my God. Why are there so many coffins? Gonna be late again. Kill surprise. Yeah, I'm gonna get fined. Oh, let's do this quickly. Now, as quickly as possible. This is so bad. I am so late. Hey, one I can actually throw away. I think. Yeah, that was right. Oh, that was bad. That was that was real bad. That's going to be quite the hefty fine. How did I still get an A? Oh. Good afternoon. Follow me to the courts, please. Okay, I'm still kind of prepared to be called up as a defendant for some reason. I'm not going to feel even remotely safe until I am back in my box in the sky. All right, Mr. Crawford. Everything goes all right. Today should be the end of the Owen Halim case. Good luck. Okay. Good evening, citizens beloved. Following what we discussed yesterday, today we'll hear from some of you and hopefully wrap up the trial. Okay, let's first bring the defendant out. Here I call Awan Halim. Mr. Halim, yesterday you admitted your misfeasance as a food inspector after we provided our evidence. We are still shocked and sad to see a good government worker turned out this way. However, we'll never mitigate the punishment because of who you are. I'm not asking for mitigation anyway. I just want a fair verdict based on the evidence. You'll get what you want. No, what you deserve. Now, let's hear it from some of our judges, shall we? Staff, get the dice rolling. Oh. Citizen number 16. Please come forward to the stage. Your Honor, and everybody. Honestly, I'm, I'm shocked to hear what the defendant said. It's the first time I've seen a food inspector who's not satisfied with what he's already got. And with so little food we civilians are getting, he still wanted to steal from us. We should never allow him to work in the government again, to say the least. He's definitely got to pay more than that. Sir, when the defendant said all those things about how the other inspectors were like him, for a moment I believed him and became so afraid and confused at the same time. 
But luckily, you stepped in and disproved it right away. I knew it couldn't be true. You would have noticed it for sure if it was real. And you would never let that happen, right? I don't understand why the defendant said those horrible things. But never with good intentions could one lie like that. Please make him realize how much wrong he's done. Uh, glad to be selected, Your Honor. I just want to say I agree with the last speaker, and I think the problem with the defendant is not just his misfeasance, but also his attitude. The way he speaks and acts, he's clearly leading to corrupt thoughts. We all know it's more dangerous than taking things off the belt, don't we? Let's eradicate that before it grows worse. But anyhow, I don't think he should work for the people anymore. Once polluted, can't be trusted. Okay. Thank you all, beloved citizens. You have made better points than I've ever imagined. Oh, I can see how eagerly Mr. Halim is trying to speak for himself there. Let's hear him out before we move on to vote him. What do you have to say for yourself at last, Mr. Halim? That's <laughs> what. Will you stop me from talking this time? You know we can't promise that, but since it's your last chance, we'll surely be more lenient. Well then, dear citizens, I can see how you still remember what I said yesterday. I won't try to stress how true they are again, because that might just look like a desperate call for sympathy, if it's not worse. But I do have something else to say. What I did, taking food off the belt, is wrong. But why is it wrong? Have you really thought about that? Not just because the law says so, but deeper than that. Why does the law say so? If you all can go through that process for once, you'll see what I'm trying to say here. That's all. That's all? Thought you were going to give us a lecture or something, so that we can all learn from you, a criminal teacher. You douchebag. Alright, staff. Please take Mr. Halim off the stage. Dear judges, let's start the voting, shall we? Uh, um, okay, I'm going to say guilty, because he is. He's guilty of the crime. Oh, sorry, no. He's not guilty, because I say so. Because the laws are stupid. I'm going to be the only one person again, aren't I? <laughs> Oops. Oh, no, I'm not. Yay! I've got friends. Yeah, not guilty friends. I mean, we're still losing horrifically, but I'll take it. Okay, I believe the result doesn't come out as a surprise to anyone. The few who voted against it, though, don't know what they were thinking, but in Iden, one can never get away with stealing food. Now, about the sentence. Based on Iron Law, there will be two possible voting options. One is immediate dismissal, which also includes a permanent ban on future application for government positions. The other is paying a fine of $50,000. And also, because of Mr. Halim's current thought condition, there will be a compulsory education program for him to take. Failing that will result in further prosecution. Okay, let's get started. I mean, nobody is going to have that much money, so we'll go. I'll go dismissal. This could go either way, though. Oh, Jesus! These people are brutal. Hey, looks like I might be on the winning side for once. I mean, it's kind of the lesser of two evils, there, isn't it? Well chosen. The result is just like I expected. Glad the majority was not affected by the defendant's digression. So here I announce, Awan Halim, guilty of misfeasance, is sentenced to dismissal. The execution will take place after he completed the education program. The judge's decision is semi-final, further prosecution may occur. Case closed. Okay. Dear citizens, there's one more thing before we finish. 
Oh no, it's going to be me, isn't it? We've just been informed that a new suspect has been confirmed, and he's right here with us. Another food inspector from our skyline, Ned Crawford. <laughs> oh no! No, I knew it! Staff, please bring him to the stage. Okay. Well, I was stressed out before, now I feel like I want to die. So, Mr. Crawford, we thank you for your service up there for the people. However, just as we stress no matter who you are, no injustice will be allowed on our watch. Sorry, but what did I do exactly? Do you still remember how we found out about Awan Halim's misfeasance? Uh, yeah. Good. The thing is, he's not the only one we checked. What? Yes, I, I know, the cost of one operation like that was extremely high, so we couldn't do many. But it would be too stupid to think D's only had one spy up there, don't you think? So we chose a few more targets that caught our attention. And there was you, the son of Benjamin Crawford. That's right. His father was among the men who put our entire city in danger 15 years ago. Mr. Crawford, we always wondered why they even let you become a food inspector in the first place. Guess we didn't worry for nothing. You're not that different from your father, are you? Tomorrow, we'll officially press charges, with more evidence, of course. So tonight, you may want to contact your lawyer, if you're going to have one. Is that clear? Yes. Good. Staff, take him down. Well, hope. Dear citizens, I'm sorry that this trial may still go on for a few days. Please understand, and like always, you may now head for the Grand Hall to get your free food. That's the reward you all deserve. Dismissed. Hmm. Oh dear. Alright, Mr. Crawford. I, uh, honestly didn't expect to hear any of that about you today. Guess there's a lesson for me to learn. Anyway, if you have a lawyer to call, now's the time. Yeah, I'm going to try and call Quinn. Um, yeah, I do. Okay, follow me. I, I may as well. I slipped in for a reason. Here we are. Feel free to pick one up and dial. I'll be waiting in the back. And oh, sorry about those speakers. We have to make sure it's not abused. You can talk with your lawyer in private tomorrow, so relax. Here we go. Uh, hello, may I help you? Um, yeah, may I speak to Quinn? Your name, sir? It's Ned Crawford. Okay, a moment, please. Hi there, Quinn speaking. Oh, hi. I, I just called to ask if you're available to help defend me tomorrow, and also how much does that cost? Oh, tomorrow? That's short notice. Uh, uh, hold on, let me check my schedule. You know what, Mr. Crawford? I just happen to be free tomorrow. Lucky you. As for the rate, well, it's case by case, so I can't really tell you right now. Why don't we meet first and discuss it tomorrow? That's, that's good, but what if I don't have enough to pay you? Don't worry, we accept payment by installations. Okay. Good. I'll be at the court tomorrow then. See you later. Turns out you have a deal. Let's head back. Oh, now I'm questioning every decision I've made up to this point. Well then, just for your information, work still continues tomorrow. I'll meet you after that, like always. Why Why would they send me to work? Why would they do that? Okay. They also didn't give me a drink, which is very rude. I'm going to be all dehydrated now. What surprised me most was that I wasn't. I knew this was coming to me. Even... If it were not yesterday, I knew it would come sooner or later. And now, all I can do is bet it all on a lawyer I've never met. Yep, yeah, admittedly, it's not ideal, buddy. It's not ideal. Well, let's embrace this final day of hell, shall we? Attention, extra line 049, transportation mode, patches, incoming item number one, mouse. Correct weight and colour, please refer to the blackboard. 
Incoming item number two, snail. Correct weight and color. Please refer to the blackboard. Sterilization necessary for all. Germ check necessary for all. Well, at least we've got patches. That's something. Patches is a lot better for stuff like this. Well, and yeah, I'm still behind. Oops. Okay, I'm actually caught up a little bit. It's a, a rare treat. Oops. Okay, this isn't bad. I'm only behind on one. Which is considerably better than I have done the last two weeks. Two weeks? Two days. Three days even. Oh god, another unqualified item. Oh, I mean, you're gonna sack me and possibly execute my face anyway, so. Come at me, bro. Ooh. Just got an achievement called Born to Win. Good memento. Ah. Okay, so I just I just checked what that achievement was for, and I think this may have just been our last day at work, because the achievement was for getting an average grade of S or A, which, I mean, is a great achievement to have, but I'm assuming that means I won't be working anymore, which is possibly a bit of a spoiler for what's to come. It's time, Mr. Crawford. You ready for the court? Sure. No. Quite frankly, Turner, I am not. You guys have been very unkind to me. All I did was help a suspected terrorist organisation. Is that so bad? Okay, Mr Crawford. Before we start, you may want to meet with your lawyer in the lounge first. Is he uh, already here? Yes, he is. This way, please. Please help me. You won't have too much time, but it should be enough. Just come out when you hear the alarm. Alright, I'll leave you two to it. Hello, Mr Crawford. Um, uh, hi. Uh, I won't beat around the bush here. Do you know who I am? Uh, well, I guess you're Quinn, the lawyer I called last night, aren't you? Do you really think you just happened to find a lawyer's card name in your room right when you needed one? Who are you? We talked on the phone recently. Not last night. It's the unknown man! Remember now? God, man from Dees. Hey, uh, sorry, I, I don't quite remember. Of course you do. You're just afraid of saying it out loud. Nice to finally meet you in person, Mr Crawford. Listen, I know it may seem counterintuitive, but this room is actually safe. But great people exchange their little secrets here too. We just have to be careful if anyone suddenly comes in. Why are you here? I'm here because you need me, and I need you. Are you really a lawyer? Well, no, but it doesn't matter. You've seen what happened to Alan, haven't you? I think a lawyer won't change anything. You can never really win the game by playing by their rules. What does that mean? Haven't you noticed? The so-called distribution system is nothing but a lie. They're just using it to manipulate food and people to their own advantage. I haven't figured out the details yet, but it being a lie has been confirmed again through Alan's trial. What? How? The logic they used against Alan was flawed, because Alan only took black bottles off the belt, and black bottles couldn't possibly be counted in. Our friends out there in the front lines only put them in the sorting machines after the government gatherers left. And plus, if the government did find out, why would they let a suspicious item pass in the first place? So, Awan, he didn't point it out because he knew that would be equal to admitting a more serious crime. Exactly. And the government seems to know that as well. Oh. Uh, this has not been helpful. Okay, in short, every food inspector that helped us is now exposed, and the government is coming for them sooner or later. 
So best case scenario, you lose your job. For worse, you might end up in prison or even be exiled. God, what should I do? I have a plan. But this plan, you may not like it. What is it? We'll talk later in this room again. Now, let's just get out there and face some accusations. Oh, Jesus. Alright, Mr. Crawford and Mr. Cox. Alright, Mr. Cox. The trial will start in a minute. Please sit and wait here for the calling. Good evening, dear citizens. Today we'll continue the case of Food Inspector Ned Crawford. Concrete evidence will be provided and some witnesses will be present. Also, the Great Ones have decided to broadcast this trial live to the entire city. They think it's important to reaffirm our stand in safeguarding our people's interests. Okay, let's bring the defendant onto the stage. Here I call Ned Crawford. I realise that the voice has now changed, but stop. I was doing the wrong one. Leave me alone. I've been constantly speaking for an hour and 20 minutes. You leave me be. Mr Crawford, do you have a lawyer or are you going to defend yourself? Um, yes, I do have a lawyer. Alright, staff, bring his lawyer on the stage. Please, introduce yourself. Sure, uh, my name is Quinton Cox, uh, general practice lawyer. And I'll be defending Mr Crawford for the rest of this trial. Good, then let's get started. As mentioned yesterday, we found that Mr Crawford has been taking items off the belt without consent. We've invited Senior Officer Rupert Ryan here to elaborate on that matter. Please come up to the stage. Oh, Rupert, it's like a knife in my heart. I thought we were buds. Greetings, everyone. I'm asked here today to discuss Mr. Crawford's case, mainly because I was in charge of his employee survey about a week ago. And something he said there might be able to show you who he is, apart from what he did. So first, about what he did. Mr. Crawford started working as a food inspector from July 30th this year. So far, we have his work records of all 46 days since then. According to the investigation, there's at least one item that went missing from his belt. Well, in other words, he stole one item from work. It doesn't really matter if that number's one or 100. The same conclusion is, he clearly committed the crime of malfeasance. I didn't do it. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. What about the other things that you said might show us who he is? It's coming right up, Your Honor. It seems to me Mr. Crawford is not only a criminal, but also one with serious thought problems. And that means he may do things that are way more dangerous than malfeasance. In the survey, he told me he wanted to become a food inspector for the sake of the people. But what he did is quite the opposite, stealing from the people. He also disguised himself as a man who upholds the law. He said he'd report his father immediately if he found out what his father did. But he took violation of the law for granted just as his father. He said inspectors who took food off the belt should be punished harshly. But that's what he did himself. Actually, my guess is he even took things off the belt after he made that statement. Now, we should have an idea what kind of person we're dealing with here. That's all I've got to say. Rupert? Rupert, why? <laughs> why? Thank you so much for your testimony, Mr. Ryan. I'm just doing my job. Sure, keep up the good work. And you may leave the stage now. Well, I think what Mr. Ryan said should be enough to draw our attention to the defendant's alleged thought crime. Before we bring out our next witness, do you have anything for us, Mr. Cox? Yes. After hearing what Mr. Ryan said, I think there's little arguing with the fact of malfeasance. But in terms of penalty, shouldn't we consider that he is just a first offender? Are you new to the court, Mr. Cox? You know we don't do first offender or other differentiation in Iden. I know, just to be sure. I suppose even the Great Ones will be judged on the same basis. Is that correct? 
Yes, it, it is. I see. Thank you. As for the charge of thought crime, I do believe more evidence is needed. Sure, that's what we're gonna do. Let's bring out our next witness then. Here I call Demian Kolosov. Demian. I didn't tell him anything. We're fine, because I didn't trust the little shit back. Your Honour, dear judges, I'm a Skyloan phone inspector, just like Mr. Crawford, and we were working together during his employee survey here in the government. What I'm about to share is from the conversations we had at that time. Um, well, I was invited to the employee survey for the first time, so I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know whether I should tell the interviewer everything about myself, so I asked Mr. Crawford how he answered those questions, and he said he didn't even answer those questions honestly. And he suggested me not to do as well. You! You anus! So when I heard what Mr. Ryan said, I felt the same. This man, Ned Crawford, never took our rules seriously and was just full of lies. Who knows what a man like him would do if we set him free? Demian, wait. I never said those things to you. Demian! Of, of course you deny it. But look at how many of us are sharing the same truth about you. It's, it's okay, Mr. Crawford. So, Mr. Kolosov, what exactly is your point? My, my point? Oh okay, yes, my point is Mr. Crawford is undoubtedly a thought criminal. That's it. I see. But there's something important missing here. What exactly is Mr. Crawford being accused of under thought crime? Without a specific charge, he just needs to go through educational programs to be corrected. There should not be any further liability for now, is there? You may get down now, Mr. Kolosov. Oh, okay. Hate you, Damien. You're right, Mr. Cox. But there is indeed a specific charge we want to put on him. If there is, why don't you tell us now? You wouldn't ask that question if you're a fan of our live trial program. The point of making a good trial is always saving the best for the end. Art of escalation. And the testimonies today are just paving it up. Seriously. With that said, I think it's about time to call it a day. Tomorrow, essential evidence will be provided and the live broadcasting will go on. Dear citizens, please don't forget the Grand Hall is now available for you to get your free food. Court dismissed. Okay. Demian, you arsehole. Okay, gentlemen. You'll have up to an hour to use this lounge from now. Take your time. I'll be waiting outside. I can't believe Demian just slandered me like that. Why would he do that? Uh, you'll be surprised how easily the government can manipulate people. They probably have the goods on him or something. Yeah, uh, right. He was so desperate to get back to the skyline. Rupert. He was definitely planning on this since the beginning of that survey, wasn't he? Well, I knew things were wrong when I saw your name on that list. Normally it wouldn't be that early for new inspectors. That's why we wanted to warn you. I know what you're thinking. Well, no matter how careful you are, an experienced interrogator will always find something to blame you on. That aside, we have a much more important thing to worry about right now. The plan. Yes, the plan. But, you know what? At the very least, we already had a good start. We did. I wanted them to broadcast this trial live, and they did. I knew they just couldn't let this chance go. This chance to prove to the people that they were right again about people who refused to follow their rules. With you, the son of Benjamin Crawford, as the perfect example. How is this a good thing? The whole city's going to know me and they hate me for it. It's a good thing, because we're going to hack it at the end. Huh, what? I bet you've noticed how they've been talking to us remotely all the time. Let's use that against them. Our goal is to hack into that device and tell people the truth with that mouth they trust. The truth. Yeah. 
There's more besides that of the rigged food distribution system. Like what? Like there's no such thing as dust pollution. The whole food security level system's made up. You put food in the air, they'll just naturally go bad as time goes by. It has nothing to do with the dust. How do you know that? Research and experiment, of course. And we'll also tell people about the black bottles. With the things in them, people don't need to rely on the government to get food anymore. And that's the key to everything. Are you going to tell me what's in those bottles now? Sure. It's seeds. Seeds? Yeah. They look like little black pellets. You bury them in the soil, you water them, take care of them. Eventually, they'll grow into all kinds of food. Fresh vegetables, for example. What? What kind of magic is that? It's nothing magical, Ned. It's all science. And that's just how food was produced before the crisis. Even if that's true, this plan is still way too idealistic. The government will probably shut down the microphone or the live broadcast right away. And if they don't, how can we be sure that the people will just believe all that? And the seeds, they're clearly not enough for everyone, are they? If you want everything to be perfect before we start doing something, that something will never be achieved. We never expect that we can change it all in one day. Every revolution has to have a start, and we're aiming at making a good one. But yes, the government's going to hunt us down as soon as they found out about the hacking. And that brings us to the sacrifice that has to be made. We're going to have to leave Iden, and we can't come back as long as this government rules. And only God knows when that would end. Are you willing to do that? I had my answer the day I made my mind up to help you. <laughs> Let's make history then. Here's what you're going to do first. Tomorrow morning at work you have to sneak out three items. We made them look exactly the same as the other ones, so you'll have to identify them through their weight. All the target items are weighed exactly 99. Should be easy to distinguish from the normal ones. Got it. But more importantly, you cannot make any mistakes at work. Whenever you fail, you'll attract the attention of the supervisor. And if they find out about this, we are done. Do you think you can do that? I'll try. What are the items for? I'll explain tomorrow. We're running out of time here. Okay then. Ned, I have my faith in you. Now just go back and prepare yourself with a good sleep. See you here tomorrow. Oh Jesus, no mistakes, and I need to remember 99. Now I have 99 red balloons stuck in my head, or 99 blue balloons, as the superior version is. Why haven't you given me a drink? Gotta say, Mr. Crawford, that defence by your lawyer was pretty impressive. No offence, but it's been some time since I last enjoyed a trial like this. See you tomorrow then. Bye, friend. Ah. Joke's on you suckers. I stashed a drink in the cupboard. Let's go to bed. Okay, so maybe this is going to be my last day. Even though this isn't like a real day. I still can't believe the chance I've always dreamt about just arrived like that. But it certainly carries much more than one man's life. My life. I've got to do this though. I want to do this. Right, yeah, I got some clues out of that, so let's see. A mysterious man who calls me several times. He seems to be a leader of D's. D's nuts! Okay, that's the last time I'm going to do that. Um, I agreed to let Quinn from D's be my lawyer, and he said there's a plan to help both of us. I need to take away three items that weigh exactly 99 from work. Also, to avoid being noticed, I cannot... Oh no, I can't even delay. Oh, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be such a problem. Okay. Oh, time to put on my big boy pants. Attention, extra line 049. Transportation mode, patches. Incoming item number one, worm. Correct weight and color. Please refer to the blackboard. Germ check, necessary for item number one. Incoming item number two, bottle. Correct weight and color. Please refer to the blackboard. Bottling, necessary for item number two. Sterilization necessary for all. Okay. Uh, 
99. Check. 99. Check. Oh, what's the gem? The Y. Okay. But you're fine. I am so very stressed out about this. Okay. Done. I think. I hope I've done it right anyway. Okay, that's the three of three at ninety-nine. So paranoid. They're definitely taking it easier on me with the time between patches. And I greatly appreciate that. Okay, this is going okay. I mean, it's actually going pretty well. No! Oh, damn it. Bloody germ check. I'm pleased that you get a chance to retry. And that it's not just an instant fail. You get a bad ending. You screw yourself. Because that would suck. That would be deeply upsetting. Yeah. Got all my three items again. Just need to make sure I'm extra diligent with the germ check. It's nice to not have a backlog. That's very, I'm, I enjoy that immensely. Okay, so overfilling the bottles doesn't count as an instant fail. That's that's comforting. Okay, got one more patch. Okay, okay, okay. Quick, 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 quick. Sterilize, sterilize, sterilize. Okay, I think I did it. I think I did it. Oh. I honestly thought this was going to take me <laughs> a lot longer. Well, I finished on an S grade. Assuming this is the last. It might not be. I turn around and see Turner standing at the entrance. Don't know when he came, but seems I'm safe. He signals me to follow. And then he shoots me in the face. Mr. Crawford, your lawyer's already waiting in the lounge. Oh, thank you. Don't thank me. Thank him. You got yourself a good one. Yes, I do. Alright, same rules as yesterday. Please leave the room as soon as you hear the alarm, and yes, I'm aware my voice just cracked. Remember, we have a scheduled live broadcast to do. Hey, did you get them? Yeah. God. Maybe you don't know how, how important this is yet, but you did it. First half of the mission. Just tell me. Are these really the things you asked for? I'm kind of worried. Yes, they are. Ew. Quinn tears open the big worms. Look. Ooh. Device A. Device B. Device C. Oh my. These are parts of the hacking device. They can make it function by putting the three pieces together. The device, its signal can't reach that far. That's why we've still got the second half of the mission. Where is it? Tomorrow morning we'll be able to get three of our men inside the government building. And they'll be passing through the underground recycling pipeline once. What you need to do is throw those three parts separately into the recycling hole at three specific times so that they can bring the parts to the floor below us and set up the device. Wait, at three specific times? That's impossible. There's no way to know about time down there. There is one, actually. You can count the number of the items. What? It moves at an average speed, so we can get the approximate time by items passed. I uh, guess I can't make any mistakes like last time. Exactly. That's nearly the same as impossible. Do you have any idea how many things I have to take care of at the same time? I can't imagine keeping count under that situation. Well... Do you know what makes it more impossible? Flinch when doing it. Okay, no time for pet talk. You know we don't have a choice now. I'm just going to tell you when to throw those three parts down the hole. You may want to get this down on paper. Firstly, there isn't a specific order required in the throwing of parts. Second, look out for the 5th, 12th and 20th items showing up on the belt. Whenever you see the 5th, 12th and 20th item, you'll have about 5 seconds to throw one part of the devices down the hole. And lastly, no mistakes. Same reasons yesterday. That's it. Okay, I've written those down, because otherwise I'll forget. Just in time. Get it in your head. Yeah. 
Perfect. It's got to be a showdown soon. Let's go see what they've got for us today. Oh my god. I've been recording for nearly two hours. <laughs> okay, Mr. Crawford and Mr. Cox. The trial will start very soon. Please be seated for the calling. The calling are here. Good evening, dear citizens. I think the broadcast just went live now. Sorry for the waiting. Today we'll... I did the wrong voice again. Today we'll pretty much conclude the case of Food Inspector Ned Crawford. Some last pieces of evidence that we deem most important will be presented. Without further ado, the defendant, please come up to the stage. And also, let's bring our first witness out. Here I call Yuan Chan. Oh, Chan! My bestest buddy in the whole wide world! Chan? So, Miss Chan, please introduce yourself. I work at Fukuong Fast Food. It's one of the designated restaurants for Skyline Inspectors. And you've been bringing food to Mr. Crawford's booth, I believe. Yep, he ordered from us several times. While you were there, you two had any conversations? Yeah, we did. According to the transcript we have, you said in the interview that Mr. Crawford tried to approach you from the very beginning. And once he got the chance, he immediately asked you a strange question. Is that correct? Yes. What's the question? He asked me where my hometown is. Why do you think he asked that? I don't know. Well, can you speculate? Uh, sorry, I don't think I should just easily speculate in a trial. Stuff. This Chan doesn't seem to be familiar with how trial works. Can you help me explain it to her for a minute? It's important that we share our views here, with which the judges can decide on things. Some staff move close to Chan and start whispering to her for a minute or so. Are you ready to tell us your speculation now, Miss Chan? Yeah. I just thought he asked that because I might look like a person from somewhere other than Iden. You mean the outside? Yeah, because of my skin colour. But that's it. It's not like it's the first time I got that kind of question. But why would he want to know about the outside all of a sudden? Well, maybe he was just bad at talking with girls. Okay, I think we've heard enough from Miss Chan. Staff, please show her out. I knew Chan wasn't going to sell me out. Hey, I can walk myself out. She's a good girl. She's a good girl, that Chan. And she's also my bestest buddy in the whole wide world. I dropped my mouse. So, Mr. Cox, do you have anything to say before we move on? Um, actually none. Found what Miss Chan said pretty natural. Mr. Crawford never strikes me as one who's good with words. You could totally ask a girl he just met some stupid questions. Well, you would not think that when you hear what we found in his booth. Uh oh. Shall we welcome our last witness out? Here I call... Nastia Lin. Officer Lin is mainly in charge of Skyline Worker Shopping Service, but she also has another important task. Why don't you tell us about it? Sure. My other responsibility is to search the booth of any suspects for evidence. That's right. As soon as Mr. Crawford became a suspect, we planned a search. I did it while he's here. Shit, I had a black bottle and a map stashed in my shelf. That's not good. Now, Officer Lin, tell us what you found. I found a map and a black bottle. The map. We all know it's illegal, but the black bottle's even worse. It was clearly smuggled from the outside, and it contained some black powder. This dangerous-looking black powder. It's so special that our experts soon managed to identify it to be the bomb material used in the D's attacks. Oh, nasty, are you bitch. Yes, that's what we found. The last piece of the puzzle. Thank you, officer, for this crucial piece of evidence. You may leave now. Ah, oh, I thought it was safe leaving it there. I should have... I should have had them with me. 
Dear judges, with that, I think everything seems much more clear. Everything our previous witnesses said makes even more sense now. Why would Mr. Crawford commit malfeasance? Why would Mr. Crawford have thought problems? Why would Mr. Crawford be so interested in Miss Chan's hometown? The answer is simple. Because he is one of D's. All the evidence pointed to the conclusion that he's been helping D's the whole time. And he was either planning on more smuggling or planning on escaping Iron after being exposed. And he committed the worst kind of thought crimes, just like his father. He tried to bring chaos and danger to this city we tried so hard to build and maintain for our people. And he did it after we put our best trust in him. Oh dear. Now, Mr. Cox, do you have anything to say? Well, shit. No, I don't. Good, as I expected. You can give your final statement tomorrow. Dear judges, due to the time limit, we shall stop here today. Tomorrow it should be the end of this entire trial. Your patience is much appreciated. Please get your reward at the Great Hall. Dismissed. Nothing about this is good. This is all bad. This is all very, very bad. Alright, gentlemen. One hour to use this lounge like yesterday. I'll be waiting outside. So. That was it. Their last punch. Why didn't you say anything to that? Haven't I told you we're bound to fail the trial? They would do anything to set you up. Anything. Then why were you... Defending you so hard? That's all performance for them to see. So that today, we can make them believe we were defeated. By their last punch. What? So that they'll let their guard down and be less vigilant about what we're going to do tomorrow. Don't tell me you still have hopes in getting out of this free. Can't you see they've even prepared normal people to testify against you? You mean Chan? She was forced to do that, I'm sure. It's a good thing to have someone you can trust. But whether she's with the government or not, soon you won't be able to see her. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to discourage you. Let's just focus on tomorrow now. That's the best shot we have to help her and many others in the long run. So, remember what I told you? The 5th, 12th and 20th. Exactly. Okay, we shouldn't use this room for that long today. Ready for the mission? <sighs> Strangely, yes. Finally had enough of it after 15 years, right? Tomorrow's the day. Let's go get them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I'm going to have to leave this episode here. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's not happening. I don't care if I have to go for another two hours. We're finishing this now. So. Yes, we can't beat evidence with words after all. No comment on the case, but I did have a slight hope for you until today. Enjoy your last night here, Mr. Crawford. Turner, I can't think of anything clever to say, so just go away. I'm going to sleep, and you can't do anything about it. Is today going to be the day? The whole idea of Tulin feels so distant and close at the same time. My head and heart are filled with emotions I can't explain. Time to go. Okay, final mission two. I need to throw away three device parts respectively when I see the 5th, 12th and 20th. Okay, so again, can't even delay. Hopefully it comes through in patches again, because patches, for some reason, my brain doesn't freak out as much with patches. But we shall see. They definitely took it easy on me in the last one, so I'm not... I mean, I don't know what I'm expecting. Attention, extra line 049. Transportation mode non-stop. No. Incoming item number one, meat. Correct weight and colour. Please refer to the blackboard. Germ check necessary for item number one. Incoming item number two, bottle. Correct weight and colour. Please refer to the blackboard. Bottling necessary for item number two. Sterilisation necessary for all. Okay. Okay, so it's the sickle germ. Uh, that was item number one. 
Uh, that's number two. Three. Four. That's five. Shit. Okay, I think this is number eight. I think. I've lost count already. This is not good. Again, I think that's ten. Okay, so the next one's going to be the twelfth item. So the next one, 20, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, I would imagine it would have told me if I dumped them down at the wrong times. I would sincerely hope so, anyway. Wait, no, that needs to go in there, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. No! Oh, hits! Attempt number two. Put it down at the wrong time. I stupidly just lost count halfway through that. I'm going to make a tally as they go. That's my plan. I got, I got so wrapped up in keeping count I forgot to actually dump one in at number five. God's sake. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It's comforting to know I can't do it wrong. But I can't complete it and have put them in the wrong place and then you to get like a bad ending for doing that that's that was good to know okay all three are dropped off now i just need to keep it together be diligent not make any mistakes and i can stop keeping count which is going to be lovely okay let's just finish off these last ones and then we're good to go i'm good for time i'm good for time Okay. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh, Jesus. That sucked. <laughs> I did not enjoy a second of that. <laughs> Surely this is it now. Surely this is this is freedom. When the work's done, I immediately notice Turner at the same spot as yesterday. This time I know for sure he didn't see anything. Wish he could, though. That was my last and best inspection ever. Be fair, it was. Okay, this is it. Last day, Mr. Crawford. Whatever the result's gonna be, good luck. Now you can go meet your lawyer in the lounge. Okay, please keep to the rules as before. Since we'll have a verdict today, this is gonna be your last chance to discuss. Please make good use of it. Tell me you did it. The time was so tight, but I think I did it. Thank God. You didn't just finish work today. You made history with it. If things go well, our men should be putting together the device on the floor below us right now. And then, what would happen? When the deputy's about to read out the verdict, bang. We'll hack into his mic, and with the live broadcasting, we'll be able to speak to the entire city. We'll tell them the truth and make them doubt for the first time in their lives. Sounds great. You know, I'm so glad you think that. The sacrifice you made, we'll never forget. All we can do in return is to help you get out of this city. How exactly are we going to do that? After we hack the mic, we'll ask the staff to bring you out. And you remember Oshimi, the guy who went to your booth? He'll take over and tell you the rest. I at least know where I'm going. You may have heard about that place. It's called Toulon. I'll be leaving for another city as well. Do you have anything you want us to help you do there? You know what? Try and help Katja. She needs she needs help. Do you know Katja Ivanov? She was another defendant. Yes, I do. If possible, can you help her? She was sentenced to exile. 
They usually exile people at random locations, but I'll tell them to keep an eye out for her. Thank you. Okay, because Chan's fine. I mean, I've paid Yurazuya to look after my mum for the rest of the time, so that she'll be okay. So, I guess this is going to be our goodbye. I think so. Listen, I've been waiting till now to tell you. Whatever reason it is behind your decision to help us, I want to say thank you. And I do hope you can appreciate its worth like I do. Maybe not today, but eventually. Now, let's go end this. I'm so ready. Gentlemen, are you ready? Sure. Alright, please have a seat. We'll be going fast towards the verdict. Dear citizens, good evening. The broadcast is live now and we're all set to hear your opinions about the defendant. I hope you're still impressed with the testimonies yesterday like I am. Mr Crawford, please come forward. And you may start drafting up your final arguments now. Without further delay, staff, please get the dice rolling. Your Honor and fellow judges, I've got to say I've been furious since I heard what he and the other inspector did. Didn't all food inspectors vow to protect the interests of people before they even started working? I'm sure they did, and the defendant did. So Mr Crawford, you broke your vow. Completely. I don't know about the others, but for me, that one thing is enough. And you aren't even sorry for what you did. At least I can't feel it. Oh, so close to 69. Hi. Hi. I just want to say I still remember the day I heard about what the defender's, defendant's father did. Uh, the day I just got recovered from severe starvation. And it was caused by nothing else but the flooding in of population. I was too weak to stop people from robbing my food. What saved me back then were the walls the government built and the orders the government established. So I was shocked to see someone try to break them after all that happened. Well, if the defendant got that from his father, he must go to jail. Because I'm not returning to that time. Not ever. I'm trying to save you people. Will you cut me some slack? Everybody, I hope you don't forget that what we say today is going to be heard by the entire city. There's no reason not to speak out our anger and disappointment. Can't you see? This man is a liar, a hypocrite, an enemy of us. When people are dying of hunger on the street, this man is eating good up in the sky. And he's not even satisfied. He's got to take more from us. I bet he's already forgotten what it's like to live down here, on the ground. The two most important things in our lives in Iden, trust and rules. Hey, spell them both. So I say, let's punish him for that. Make him pay. Make him pay. Make him pay. Do you need to calm yourself down? Oh, what an ending, judges. I believe you all made the message very clear. Mr. Cox, it's your turn now. I feel sorry for my client, but at this point, I don't see there's anything left for us to argue. And I think Mr. Crawford agrees and is ready to take responsibility for what he did. Well, I guess I should have known that earlier. But this should be a good lesson for all government workers. Okay then, all we have left to do is the voting. Firstly, the obvious one. Guilty or not guilty? Do I get a vote? Oh, I, I do. I do actually get a vote. Surely not. I don't know. <laughs> the button's there, but I can't click it. Come on, not guilty. Come on, not guilty. I'm just waiting for guilty to skyrocket. There she goes. She's building momentum. Oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus. And guilty it is. 
Doesn't feel the same when you yourself are standing there, does it? Let's move on to the next. For what the defendant did and has been charged with, two possible options are decided based on Iron Law. One is immediate dismissal, which also includes a permanent ban on future application for any government positions and a compulsory educational program. The other is 10 years of imprisonment, where he'll be taught how to be a qualified citizen as well. Now please, make your choice. Dis dismissal? Please? I mean, it doesn't matter either way, but 10 years in prison seems a bit harsh. What is essentially 10 years of torture. Sorry, not torture. Re-education. Oh, i got one person that doesn't want to see me tortured to death. It's, that's something, I suppose. Oh, two people. Three people. Yay! I have some friends. Come on, dismissal. I don't think it's going to go that way. I have a nagging feeling. Well, damn. Time's up. And there we have it. Our final verdict. No surprises. My dear citizens, and everyone that's watching or listening to us elsewhere, here I announce, by the decision of the majority of our anonymous judges, Ned Crawford is now sentenced to... S sorry, the, the signal's bad. Let me repeat. By the decision of the majority of our anonymous judges, Ned Crawford is now sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment. What? What happened to the hacking? The execution will be tomorrow, after the defendant collected all his belongings from the skyline. Staff, please take him to the first floor. Ah, I see. We already have an officer waiting for him there. This is them talking now. I see. You go now. Okay. Dear citizens, before they cut me offline, there's something important I have to tell you. If you think a food inspector shouldn't take things from the belt, you should hear this. The government doesn't take any food off the belt. Not because it doesn't want to, but because it doesn't have to. The truth is, the government simply owns all the food. All of it. The Great Ones, if they're more than just names or whoever that are behind those masks, use this advantage to manipulate and exploit us. And the worst thing they did is to force a world where there's only black and white. You are either a perfect citizen or you're a thought criminal. There's no middle ground for you to stand on to question the rules themselves. Therefore, many of us have to follow, even protect this system. Sure, we may get to live a peaceful or even abundant life, but we'll never know when the guillotine will fall. For everything we get, we get it from them, which comes with a price. So we, these, are trying to change this. We've never used violence. All we did was to bring seeds inside them. With seeds, everyone can easily create food with their own hands for the first time in decades. And that is going to be our first step to... Hopefully that was enough. And hopefully I get away. Hey, you there. See the defendant. I've been waiting here for two hours. Uh, yeah, sorry. It's alright, just, just leave him. Just leave him here. You can go back to the court now. Remember to tell them Joseph took over. You got it, sir. You are... Oshimi. Thanks for remembering me, Mr. Crawford. But now, let's run. Oh god. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. I hope. I hope we did it. Keep an eye out for any cars coming for us, will you? Sure. So, we finally did it. How do you feel? Honestly, I, I don't know. 
I've been waiting for this day all my life, and now it's just overwhelming. More so than my first day on the skyline. You've been waiting for this day. Oh, I mean, uh, never mind, it doesn't really matter now. I know you must be having some mixed feelings. Risked it all only to save the future of those people who just spit on you. Or maybe you couldn't care less. Either way, you're leaving this city for good. It's what I wanted. How do I get to... How do I get to Tulans? After some more driving, we'll get off near a mountain. And there's a hacked spinner all set up for you. I'll teach you how to fly it, don't worry. Then you can just follow the navigation. It's going on with the music. When you get to the destination, our guy there will get you all prepared for two months. I see. Thank you for all this. You earned it. But I have to tell you, things in Tuland are not that better. You don't need to tell me anything. Better or worse, I want to see it myself. The great beyond. We arrived at the foot of the mountain. Oshimi took me to the spinner and started teaching me how to drive it. By the time I realised we were flying high above the night sky, this sky I'm so familiar with just outside of my booth. And now the cold wind's blowing through my cheeks. Keep, the music keeps dropping out, it's very weird. I look down and realise how Iden Sea actually connects to every single shore in the world. The first time in my life, even with everything behind and ahead of me unknown, I feel what it's like to be free. With no music in the background. But yeah. There's still things in my booth I wish I could take away, and people in Iden I'll surely miss. But I guess this is how a real goodbye is. They'll be treasured. Nasty I won't be. Nasty is dead to me. Chan's cool though. Me and Chan. She's my girl for life. Because, and for the last time, she is my bestest buddy in the whole wide world. I hope they give me some sort of stats. That would be cool. That would satisfy my nerd time. Three months later, Mamimi Restaurant. Peaceful underground area, Tuland. <laughs> Ned, get the belt and sushi ready. We're opening in 30 minutes. Got it. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, you know what day it is today? Of course. It's the radio day, isn't it? It is. You count in the days or something? Yes, I am. You don't get to listen to the news every day. Let alone the music. Well, that's true. By the way, I found a postcard in our mailbox this morning. Is it for you? Postcard? Yeah, I put it on the shelf there. Check it out yourself. Okay, I'd better go prepare. Meet me outside when you're done. Check all your letters. Hmm... Interesting. What does it mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, I kind of wish I'd been able to been able to figure out the um, postcard. That's bothering me. If you know what that is, please, please tell me in the comments. Put me out of my misery there. Oh, this game has been fantastic. It truly has. 
I have, even though it's really stressed me out at times, I have loved this so, so much. I'm very glad I played this. And thank you again to Wan Peng Chen for, for sending over a code for this. Hopefully, I have done your game justice, and hopefully, I didn't bastardize anyone's voice too badly. What I love the most is that well, there's a, a good amount of hours that I've put into this. You can see, obviously, from the videos, but I've played longer than the videos because, obviously, a lot of it gets edited out. For my grandpa, who carried me on his shoulder and showed me the world. That's beautiful. That really is beautiful. Yeah, there is a sickening amount of replayability to this game. So there are so many different branching pathways. I don't know if it will make a difference to the overall end of the game. But what if I didn't help them? What if I reported every bottle? What if I didn't let Karcher in? Plus then you've got the two different food places. So I ordered, I ordered from one of the different food places and it was someone I went to school with. So there's a whole other storyline there. And the other place, I haven't ordered from them at all, so God knows what could have been waiting for me there. Much replayability. Since the citywide riot concerning food matters broke out in Aiden, a series of negotiations have all reached deadlock. While the local government claimed that the situation is under control, a few days ago a small amount of civilians still managed to escape the city and started building up shelters in the wild. It is believed some previously exiled citizens have been saved by this, and thus joined in the resistance force. Whether this will become a valid solution to the status quo in Aiden remains unclear. Hopefully Catcher found them. Yes! Results! Born type follower, braving, food consumed 84, yeah. Oh, items check 1,280. 123 delayed items. Ending type, drowner. Ooh. That's very cool. Task skipping and auto dialogue options have been unlocked, so you can now load and restart the game from any day to explore. That's very cool. And that ties in nicely to what I was saying about the different options. So, okay, you don't have to play the whole thing again. You can just jump back to certain points. Oh, this game has been phenomenal. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I've said it all. I love this very much. I'm going to sorely miss this game. My throat and voice, however, is not because I have now been talking for between two and a half and three hours constantly. And I can feel it in my throat. <laughs> so I'm going to stop talking in a minute. It's going to be great. But... Thank you very much for watching this, and I know a few people have been watching the whole series, so thank you very much to you guys, I really appreciate that. If you've liked this video or the series, then make sure you <laughs> a like one. It's ranking member of D's, the subscribe button, make sure you that bad boy. And until next time, and for the final time in this series, love you bye.